times this morning as we sing that song, Blessed be your name. Yes, God, we bless you this morning. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, the land that is plentiful, free streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, when I found in the desert place, the walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, every blessing you pour out, Lord, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Your glorious name. Blessed be your name, God. Blessed be your when the sun, when the sun shining, when the world, when the world torn as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road. Blessed be your name on the road. With suffer though this pain, for it's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, every blessing you pour out, Lord, I turn back to praise. When the darkness, when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory, you give, you give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, no, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the, blessed be your glory, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory, name. Yes, God, we bless you and we thank you, God. We thank you, Jesus. Let's try those hands. I see to that song, glory to me. Over all the earth. Over all the earth, you reign on high. Every mountain tree, every sunset sky. But my one request, though my only So what she got, so what she reigned, glory in me, glory in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So what she reigned me again, over all the oh every four. Over every fall, over every... 
more to me than any earthly thing. So what she rated me again, the rain in me, rated your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So what she rated me, the rain in me, the rain in me, rain in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I. So will she reign in me again? No reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So will she reign in me again? Lord, have right away, God, we thank you, Jesus. Yes, we're going to sing that song, Hall of Worship. We're going to worship him this morning. Yes, God, we thank you, God, it's all about you. When the music fades. Music. When the music, all is shut away. All is shit away, and I simply longing just to bring, longing just to bring something that's so uh, that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more, I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. It's all what you have required. You search much, you search much deeper within. For the way things have been, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. Jesus, I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it, but it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. King of endless words, King of endless words, no one, no one could express. She is the one we can pull, the one we can pull. All I have, all I have is yours. Every single, I'll bring you more. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in this song. It's all what she has. Such was deep out through the way, through the way things are. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord. You are worthy. Thank you, God. Everyone, thank God for His goodness this morning. Let's sing that song out from the top. I love you, Lord. I 
I love you, Lord, for your mercy, God, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your from the moment, from the moment that I wake up, and so I lay my head, oh, I will see all the goodness. You have in faith all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I have made oh I will see all the goodness oh I love your voice I love your voice you have let me free through the fire in darkness. You are close, God. Yes, I've known you as I've known you as a Yes, I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Declare it I hope my life, God. All right. You have in faith. Oh God, you're so faithful. Oh my life, you have it so, so good. With every breath that I am, oh I will sing. Oh I will sing of the goodness. Your goodness runs after. Your goodness is running. It's running out. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. When my life's laid out, I give you God. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running out. Oh, your goodness, God. Your goodness is running out. You're so good, God. Your goodness is running after. It's running after. With my life, with my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Oh God, we sing it out. Oh God, all my life you have been, sing it out church, all my life God, all my life you have been so, so good, with every breath that I am in, oh I will see all the goodness. Yes, God, all oh, my life, Lord. All my life, you have in faith. Yes, God, all oh, my life. All my life, you have it so, so good. With every breath that I am in. Oh, oh, I will sing. Oh, let's worship him, yes, God. Oh, I will sing. Oh, I will sing. Oh, the goodness of God. Yes, God, we thank you, God. We worship you, Lord. You are worthy, Jesus. We magnify you. Yes, God, you are worthy, God. We worship you in this place. Worthy are you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, my God and my Father. We love you in this place, O oh Lord. Be exalted, O oh God. Be high and lifted up, O oh Lord. Shanda Rabba Baba 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 Yosoriende. Yashanda Rabba Baba Baba Yosokoriende. 
All the praise, all the glory is yours, O Lord. We give you glory, we give you honor, God. We exalt you today, O Father God. Oh, the blood of Jesus sets us free, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, wonderful King, wonderful Lord. We, oh God, exalt your name, the name that is above all names. Shonda Robo Bobo Boya Shanda Lava Baba Bayo Sori Ende. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise God, church. As we're in His presence, uh, amen, we want to, amen, commit our service into God's hands. Uh, we want to believe God for today, amen, that God's going to speak to us, uh, that we're going to be changed by His word, uh, challenged by His word. We want to pray as well for. Nama for favorite work. We want to pray for Brother Imran. Amen. Believe God for him. Pray for financial breakthrough for Vinay and family. Strength for Cynthia. Breakthrough for Lorraine. Salvation for Lorraine's family. For Angelo, Jada, Lucy, Nat, OJ, and Tasha. Amen. Let's believe God for, amen, a renewed mind for Teresa. Healing for Angel, Angel and Lakira. Uh, Kadir, strength for healing. We also want to believe God for Linda. Amen. My wife, she's uh, really sick. She's got the flu. She's also put her back out as well. And uh, it's just before revival. Amen. The devil is a liar. So if you would pray, amen, for Linda, for healing, for strength. Uh, continue to lift up again a new church building for us. Uh, amen. Fill for healing for those, uh, amen, that were saved yesterday. In Lincoln, amen, I believe there was uh, several people saved yesterday. Let's also believe God for this week we have revival, amen, from Thursday right through to next Sunday with an American evangelist, amen, he's coming over. And so that's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, both services. So please lift that up in your prayers this week. Uh, uh, and let's believe God traveling mercies for the evangelist as him and his wife uh, uh, travel. Uh, amen. Tomorrow, I believe, uh, uh, they're going to be traveling over here. So please pray for them. Uh, let's believe God for you as well uh, today. Let's pray for Pastor Danny in Newcastle and his wife, uh, Hannah, as many of you know, Danny has a rare form of cancer. And, uh, you know, it, it can't be healed, apparently, unless Jesus heals him. And so let's believe God for healing for Danny. Uh, let's also pray for Japan. Amen. Believe God for that nation. Let's pray. Uh, amen. For Exeter, where we don't have a church at this moment in time. Let's pray for the ongoing war there in Ukraine. Let's believe God, amen, that souls will be saved, that God will bring a peace upon that place. And let's believe God for you today. Can you say amen? amen. So let's pray. Let's lay hold of God as Brother Eric comes and leads us in prayer this morning, church. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for who you are, God, for you are the King of... God, you rule and you reign, God, in majesty, God. God, there is none like you, O oh God. God, we ask, O oh God, that your hand, God, would be that which is upon this service this morning, God. God, as we come together, God, God, as we come together, God, as a congregation of believers, God, knowing, God, where two or more are gathered, God, there you dwell in the midst, O oh God. God, we ask, O oh God, that you will pour out your spirit this morning, God. God, that you will pour out the supernatural, God, upon this service, God. God, that Pastor Temple, God, will speak another word from the throne room of heaven, God. God, we ask, oh God, that you, oh God, would have your way, oh God, upon these knees, God, put before you, God. God, for you know, oh God, you know our hearts, oh God, and you would incline your ears, oh God, 
unto the needs of your saints, O God. God, we ask right now, O God, that you will be magnified, that you will be glorified, that you will be high and lifted up, O God. God, let nobody leave this place the same, God, but stirred and challenged, God, by your word this morning, God. Let us be believing for this revival, believing for a building, God, believing for growth, O God, and dominion in this city, God. And as we do so, God, and we commit this service into your hands, oh God. We give you all the praise and all the glory this morning in Jesus' holy name. Amen. greet one another. Amen. Thanks. Praise God. You can find your seats. Uh, amen. This morning, church. Uh, praise God. Amen. Good morning to everyone. It's good to see you out uh, this morning here at the Potter's House. Uh, amen. We do have a few announcements that we'd like to share with you. Uh, amen. We have youth this afternoon. Uh, and so please, uh, amen, youth uh, uh, this afternoon, if you're aged between 13 and 19, uh, and then the youth group is for you. Uh, and Eric and Anna are leading that, so please see them. For further details, also after the service this morning, it was Deborah's birthday on Thursday, and uh, amen, uh, and uh, so she's 21 again, and so uh, she's cooked for the whole church, uh, and so uh, there's lots of food through there, uh, and uh, so she wants to bless the church, uh, and so don't rush off afterwards, uh, amen, uh, there's going to be a, uh, a feast uh, to celebrate Sister Deborah's birthday, uh, and so we thank God for our sister. And so that's after the service this morning. Amen. So please bear that in mind. Then tonight we have uh, uh, another service tonight at 5.30 for prayer. 6.30 our service begins. I'm, uh, I'm going to be doing a series tonight uh, uh, called Popular Verses. So scriptures that everyone knows. I want to break down certain scriptures uh, I'm going to be doing that over the next few weeks uh, on a Sunday night, so I really do encourage you to come out, uh, amen, because so many times people misinterpret Scripture, and so I'm going to be breaking that down for you tonight, uh, amen, at 5.30 uh, for prayer, 6.30 our service begins, uh, and then uh, I believe uh, this coming uh, Wednesday, uh, we have an outreach, I believe, youth, uh, I think the youth are having an outreach. Oh, it's not this Wednesday, the following Wednesday, okay. All right, so uh, uh, what we do have is next Thursday coming uh, is we have revival with evangelist Al Jenkins. Uh, and so please don't miss this. It's, listen to me, church. It's Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night at 7 o'clock each night, and then next Sunday morning at 11 a.m. and next Sunday night at 6.30 PM. And so uh, Evangelist Jenkins, he was my pastor for 12 years, uh, amen, a good man of God. Uh, and so please come out and hear the word of God. Uh, and so it'll be a great time. Uh, and so please, please, please take time off. Uh, come out to these services. Invite friends. Invite your enemies. Uh, invite sinners to get saved. Amen. So that will be this Thursday. Uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, church. Also, uh, amen, the marriage seminar. Those of you who uh, put your names down to go to the marriage seminar, some of you uh, haven't paid the wash owing. Some of you, maybe you forgot to pay in installments, uh, and I don't know who it is, but uh, I got an email from Pastor Danny yesterday uh, Ask if I would remind people, uh, if you have paid one installment, then can you please pay off uh, uh, by the end of April the rest of that. Uh, so that would be a real blessing. And so uh, uh, we have a marriage seminar every year. I know that already it's fully booked. Uh, and so, But for those of you uh, that didn't get on the list in time this year, make sure you get on for next year. Be preparing for that. It's a great, great time we're going to have out in the countryside there. And it's going to be a blessed time. Uh, and so that's coming up in May. And so please be aware of that. Uh, also, we've got a lot of impact teams coming up uh, in uh, amen, the next few weeks. Also, talking about impact teams, uh, I want to say firstly, thank you. 
Uh, for those of you that went yesterday to Lincoln, uh, but I'm also disappointed that some of you uh, didn't turn up. Your names were on the list. Uh, you know, with, uh, Matthew works hard at making all the arrangements. Uh, and when people don't turn up without any explanation, it messes the whole day up. And so it messes up people who are going to go in cars and all this sort of thing. Uh, and so please. And so I'm now going to make a new rule. And that is, I've noticed that a lot of people go on impact teams, but they don't come on local outreaches. And so I want to say to you, unless you come on local outreach, we've got to win our city first. Hello? Do you agree with me? We have to win our city first. And so unless you're on local outreaches on a Wednesday night or a Saturday when we have them, then we're not allowing you to go on impact teams into other cities. And so please, uh, amen, uh, if your names are on a list uh, and uh, if they've been crossed off, don't be offended. That's because uh, you need to start coming on local uh, outreaches first. Uh, we had 17 names for Saturday, yesterday, to go to Lincoln. We ended up with just nine people because everyone cancelled or some people didn't even let us know. And we can't run... Uh, Things like that, because you're one, you're letting that pastor down, that city you're going to. And so please, if you put your name down on the list, make sure that you go. And uh, also, please, we want to impact our city. And so please make sure that you are on uh, the local outreaches uh, as well. Uh, take part. It'll stir your faith. Uh, it's not about just going to another city to explore uh, another city. It's about doing something for Jesus, and it starts here. Can you say amen? And so please be aware of that. Uh, that would be a real, real blessing. Also, we do have, obviously, uh, other events coming up, other uh, uh, Bible studies, uh, etc., outreaches coming up. All the dates are there. But let's remember this week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Revival with Al Jenkins. This morning, we started a new Bible series called Missing the Point. I just laid the foundation this morning. It was good to see so many people come out this morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll be praying next Sunday because we have revival, but the Sunday after, we'll be continuing that series all about the Pharisees. Uh, and I really do encourage you to come out uh, because in, in every one of us here this morning, there's a Pharisee spirit. And we want to expose that so God can deal with that uh, that would be a real blessing. So that's not next Sunday, the Sunday after. That will continue. Amen. Praise God. That's all in the way of announcements for now, church. Amen. Except we have a scarf that was found outside, a, a, a black and white scarf. Mercy has it at the back there. Uh, ladies, if it's you, amen, then see Mercy afterwards. If you're a guy and that's your scarf, you're in trouble. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, praise God. Amen. Let's give God praise as we take uh, this offering this morning. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Let's be faithful in our giving. Uh, please note uh, we've changed our bank account uh, details now. Uh, amen. Uh, you can still give online. It's already been automatically changed. Uh, there's a QR code as well. Uh, I've asked this already, uh, uh, please fill out the new gift aid forms. If you are a taxpayer, please, uh, amen, uh, scan the QR code. Uh, uh, you will be able to digitally send uh, the, the, the new gift aid form with your up-to-date details on so we can claim tax back off your gift. And so please do that uh, for you old school people that don't like technology, uh, there is forms by my office on the notice board in a little file. Some people have started taking them and filling them out by hand. Uh, please make sure you give them to Matthew or myself after the service. Uh, that would be a real blessing. And so please, 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 it really does bless the church uh, that we're able to claim gift aid, uh, claim some tax back off the government uh, and so please make sure you fill out your forms, please. Uh, amen. Either uh, obviously online or on uh, the QR code there. 
digitally or do it, uh, amen, by filling it out uh, with a hard copy down near the office, uh, amen, that will be a blessing, praise God. Let's give this morning, uh, amen, as Tisson asks God's blessing upon the gift and the giver. Amen. Let's give this morning hallelujah. Hello, Sam. Let's sing that song over all the earth. Over all the earth, you reign on high. Every mountain stream, every sunset sky. Lord, my one request, Lord, my only is that you reign in me again, you reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So as you reign in me again. Let's thank God for Brother Philmon. Children, if you make your way to Sunday school this morning... Hallelujah. Amen. Psalms 23 uh, this morning. And we're going to be looking at verse 6 this morning. Uh, and I really felt stirred to uh, minister this message this morning as I've uh, put this together. I've enjoyed putting it together. And I want to challenge every heart this morning in this place uh, out of this portion of Scripture. Uh, a guy called Dr. Michael Jacobson, he'd done a recent study in which patients uh, in a hospital were asked to recall various types of emotional experiences. And so uh, the idea was that they were asked to recall emotional experiences uh, and whilst they were recalling these experiences, doctors monitored their psychological reactions. And so these patients were actually asked to recall an argument. How many of you can recall an argument that you've had? Yes, that's all of us, right? You can recall an argument perhaps, maybe with your spouse. Don't say amen, but... The reality of it is, uh, amen, they were asked to recall an argument in which they became very angry and frustrated. And the patient was to relive that experience in their mind for five minutes. So they're told to go and relive that experience in their mind for five minutes. And what this study found that the doctors noted that these patients, uh, when they begin to relive uh, arguments uh, and all this stuff uh, that made them very angry and frustrated, uh, the doctors noted that their immune system became depressed uh, and their antibody levels dropped by 55% during this uh, five minutes of reliving, uh, amen, an emotional experience from the past. But what was interesting is, uh, six hours later, their immune system was still depressed. But on the other hand, patients were also told to re-experience an event that involved love, an event that involved care or appreciation, and this emotional reaction caused the antibody levels to rise by 40%. And it was still elevated six hours later. I share that because we all need good vibrations, right? We all need, amen, to remember good things. In our text this morning, here is David. David wrote, amen, this psalm that we're going to look at this morning. In fact, uh, for some, it's classed as the most famous psalm of all. 
Can anyone tell me what psalm actually means? Anyone? Song, yes. That's what psalms means. It's a song. And so here is David. He's writing a song, amen, in the book of Psalms. And so this song that we're going to look at this morning has topped the charts for over two and a half thousand years. Amen. It's still number one. It is apparently the best known psalm, the best love psalm, and actually the most quoted psalm. Perhaps no verse in the psalms give more good vibrations than the last verse as David talks about his final destination. And so let's look today at Psalms 23 and verse 6 this morning. The Bible says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now think about this church. Think about this verse this morning. That's a powerful verse. We sung that song this morning purposely. I said to Philmon, I want that song. Amen. About the goodness of God. Because I knew that I was going to be speaking about this text this morning and breaking it down. As many of you know, I've, I've been very fortunate in my life uh, as a Christian to be able to preach around the world. I've been as far as New Zealand, all, all around Australia and America and Africa and places like that in Europe, uh, preaching the gospel. So I've had the opportunity to fly a bit. I've had the opportunity to get on a plane. And as you know, when you get on an airplane, you have to check in, right? You have to check in your, your luggage. And so sometimes I get asked the question, you know, what's your final destination? And a couple of times I've been a little bit cheeky and I've said heaven. I've said heaven. I remember one time saying heaven. Uh, and this lady, this clerk, if you like, uh, she turns around and she says to me, I can't check your bags there. And in my mind, I, I, I turn around and I, I want to say, oh, that's okay, because it ain't going to get there anyway. Right? My luggage isn't going to make it to heaven. And those of you who know about heaven, you'll understand why. So I want to preach a sermon I've entitled this morning, Final Destination. Because every one of us has a final destination. Some of you are going to be looking forward to your final destination. Some of you are going to be worried about your final destination. The truth is we all have a final destination church. And that destination this morning is a place called eternity. Every single one of us. If you notice again in Psalm 23 and the last word of that verse in verse 6 says the word forever. That word forever. Now I don't know what you can put before your forever. Forever. But understand this, church. Your final destination is going to be somewhere forever. Forever. That's something none of us can escape. We're going to be somewhere when we die forever. But understand this this morning. Your final destination is going to be somewhere forever. It is going to be eternity. Either in heaven or in hell. Yes, people that come to church end up in hell. Hello. My job 
is to make sure you make it to the right destination. God's heart is that you make it to the right destination. So let's look together, church, out of this portion of Scripture, at our final destination this morning. Now, when you come out of the, the valley of the shadow of death, I want you to wake up in heaven. I want you to wake up in heaven. Understand this morning, church, that life is a journey. And that journey, you are simply preparing for your final destination. Every one of you. You're preparing. And some of you hadn't thought that far ahead, perhaps. But what if Jesus comes back this afternoon? What if he comes back next week? Amen. What's your final destination going to be, church? Because thinking about our final destination and the journey to get there, I believe in our text there are three, amen, wonderful, encouraging truths that ought to give us all who know Jesus victory over worry, over depression, over anxiety as we face the future church. So let's look firstly. God's goodness is watching over me. God's goodness. Amen. We're told in our text that goodness follows us all the days of our lives. Amen. If you would throw up that scripture again, mercy please. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's encouraging, right? That's a very encouraging piece of Scripture, church. So that shows me when I read this portion of Scripture that God's goodness actually comes behind us all the time. It comes behind us. Now that doesn't mean that everything that happens to you will be good. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that God will use everything that happens to you for good. No matter what bad or evil comes our way, if the Lord is your shepherd, well, that scripture says goodness will come out of whatever happens. Even a tragedy, goodness can come out of it. This simply tells me this morning, church, especially in the Old Testament language, that in Romans chapter 8, in the New Testament language, we're told in verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. So remember today, church, our main text, Psalm 23 and verse 6, is actually a shepherd boy's song. David was a shepherd. And so, church, this is a psalm of how a shepherd actually leads his sheep. Now, we have learned already, church, that the shepherd in the psalm that we're looking at this morning is actually the Savior in the Gospels. It's Jesus Christ. The shepherd that David is talking about is our Lord Jesus Christ. And we all know that Jesus is no ordinary shepherd. Why? Because in John 10 and 11, the Bible says, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Right? He says that. Well, that's very interesting verse uh, because also in the book of Acts, uh, it tells us something earthly about Jesus' life. Acts 10 and 38 says uh, that Jesus of Nazareth uh, with the Holy Spirit and with power went about doing good. Amen. So Jesus went about doing good church. 
If you want to know what Jesus Christ did for 33 years, well, the Bible tells us he went about doing good. He went about doing good. What he did then, church, he's doing for us now. God wants good things for us. The good shepherd this morning is still doing good for his sheep. We're the sheep. Now, I want you to think about something concerning goodness. If you know anything about goodness, nothing good ever comes except from God. Right? The Bible tells us in James chapter 1 and verse 17, every good gift, every perfect gift is from where? From above and comes down from the Father of Light's church. And furthermore, nothing expect good ever comes from God. Psalms, amen, 52 and verse 1 says, The goodness of God endures continually. Amen. Continually, church. In one sense, God is good to everybody. This is why the psalmist said in Psalms 145, The Lord is good to all. His tender mercies are over all His works. Then Jesus says in Matthew 5 and 45, He makes the sun rise, church, amen, on the evil and on the good. He also sends rain on the just and the unjust. But I want to ask you this morning, what's your final destination going to be? You know, wherever I talk to anybody about, you know, their final destination, everyone says we want it to be heaven. Right? Yes. How many people here want to go to heaven? Right? That's everyone, yes? yes? Everyone wants to go to heaven. But what are you doing about it? What are you doing about making it your final destination this morning? Because being a good person isn't enough. Can I even say this? Coming to church once a week, twice a week, three times a week is not a guarantee to get you to your final destination. This is why, church, I ask you again, amen, where's your final destination going to be? Because you can go anywhere in this world where you can't find some evidence of the goodness of God. You'll always find evidence of the goodness of God, church. Psalms 33 and verse 5 tells us, he loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of God. It's full. Yeah, when people turn around and say they don't believe in God, I'm like, look around. Look around you. The Bible tells us the earth is full of God's goodness, church. See, the problem is... We take God's goodness for granted. Hello. We so often, church, we don't actually realize how good God is. We don't realize how good He is to us as individuals. And let me say this as well, church. We many times, we, we don't understand how we benefit from God's goodness every day. Now, I, I, I read this story and I found it quite human. So I thought I'll just add this into my message. It was about a dad. You know what dads are like when they have lots of children? They want to tell them about the old days. They want to tell them about how it was growing up for them. And so I heard about this dad who was actually getting fed up 
with all the materialism in his house. He said to his wife, his children are so spoiled. So he decided to sit down his children for one of those fatherly talks. He sits down with his children uh, and he says, uh, I don't know if you know this children, but you don't realize how good you have it here. Yeah, one of those talks. He turns around and he says to his children, when I was a boy, you know it's coming, don't you? I had to get up before daylight just to deliver newspapers. I had to get up and walk to school in the rain. I had to walk to school in the snow and the cold weather. And then after school, uh, I would work at the grocery store. And even then, uh, we didn't always have enough to eat. And so he's telling his children this. Uh, they're sitting there, they're listening to their father, and their eyes are getting bigger and bigger and bigger as he tells the stories. And then, the dad felt that his message was getting through. At last, they're going to start appreciating all that I do for them. One of the little children says, Wow, Dad, I bet you're glad you live with us now. <laughs> See, we take God's goodness for granted even here this morning we can take God's goodness for granted so let's look secondly God's grace is working in me in our text this morning we're told that not only does goodness follow us but mercy follows us as well it says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, mercy, church, is just a flip side of grace because, in fact, it is the result of grace. Isaiah 60 and verse 10, this is in the New Living Translation, says, I will have mercy on you through my grace. I want you to notice that both goodness and mercy, we're told in Psalms 23, will follow us. The Hebrew word literally means to pursue. That's what it means. What this really says, God's goodness and God's mercy pursues us. It runs after us. This is why I got Philmon to sing that song today about God's goodness. In other words, our text shows us, uh, amen, that God's goodness uh, and God's mercy pursues us. It runs after us uh, and it stays right on our heels all the days of our lives. Remember, church, our text uh, is a shepherd's song. This is what Psalms mean, a song. And so we have... Uh, the shepherd's song. Now, I don't know if you know anything about farming sheep. I was brought up on the farm when we lived in Scotland. Amen. As I pastored a church there for many years. Amen. I would often watch the sheep. There were sheep all around us in the hills of Glasgow, Scotland. Now, I don't know if you know this. Amen. But the shepherd. Do not drive the sheep. They lead the sheep. They lead the sheep. Uh, and sheep are always led from the front. Uh, so that the shepherd would always be out in front. Uh, but what the shepherd uh, would always have with him is sheepdogs. Sheepdogs. I noticed, uh, amen, the, the farmer who had the sheep near where we lived. He had six sheepdogs. What I notice is that two of them do all the work. The other four do nothing. And I thought, that's just like church. 
Because I watched these sheep, uh, amen, with the dogs that uh, they're rounding them up as the shepherd, uh, amen, is trying to lead his sheep. Uh, and what I see, church, uh, amen, the dog's job was to follow behind the sheep. And if the sheep went astray or the sheep got hurt uh, or the, if the sheep started falling behind, uh, they would automatically bark uh, they would bark to get the shepherd's attention to come and take care of the sheep. See, David is saying in our text this morning that goodness and mercy are like divine sheepdogs in our lives. In other words, they're always following behind us. Goodness and mercy is watching over us, helping us when we have a need. This is why this morning, church, uh, I want you to understand we need both goodness and mercy. But how often do we take it for granted? How often, how many people woke up this morning and thank God for waking up? Come on. One person. But usually we just take it for granted, don't we? Because let's be honest, there are some people that haven't woken up this morning. See, we need both goodness and mercy. We need goodness for our steps, but we also need mercy for our stumbles. Because we're all prone to stumble. Turn to your neighbor and say, have you stumbled lately? If they answer yes back, then pray for them. But we're all prone to it. We're all prone, church. This is why we need mercy for our stumbles. God's goodness this morning supplies us. God's mercy soothes us. God's goodness helps us. God's mercy heals us. God's goodness provides for us. And God's mercy pardons us. Lamentations, a very good scripture, verse chapter 3 and verse 22. And 23 said, The Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his passions, uh, compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So I thank God, church, that his mercies. Uh, I knew every morning because there's not a day that goes by that you and I do not need the mercy of God. So I ask again, what's your final destination? Heaven. That should be on the heart of every Christian in this place. That should be on the amen, our minds all the time. I want to make it to heaven. How many people here today think sometimes, Jesus, don't come back yet. I'm not ready. Come on. There are times you know you're not ready. Right? You know. But what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? Because our final destination is coming. For some, it's coming sooner than you think. Because no one is guaranteed tomorrow. Think about parents for a moment. Think about you parents here today, how you're always picking up after your children, right? They lay stuff. Children can be very untidy. I know I used to be one. Can be very untidy. You're forever picking up behind your children. Well, I want to tell you, that's what God does for us. He's always picking up behind us. Picking up our mess, church, because we make mistakes. Every one of us makes mistakes. We blow it from time to time. We turn round and we get things out of order. We don't take seriously our salvation. Hello? Hello? Yet the Bible says we're to work out our own salvation with what? 
fear and trembling. I don't see too many people trembling nowadays. Hello. Yet we're told to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Because the final destination is coming. It's coming for all of us, church. We all make mistakes. And yet God is there trying to work it out. Trying to take care of our mess. Why? Because that's simply the mercy of God. The mercy of God. I'm so grateful for this text this morning. I am so grateful that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. I'm thankful for that. Because that shows me that goodness and mercy doesn't just follow me some days. Like us. Some days we have good days in Jesus. Come on. And there are other days where, let's not get into that, eh? But thank God, church, that His goodness and mercy is not just for some days. Because the Bible says for all days. For all days. Thank God He doesn't turn His goodness and mercy on and off like we turn our Christianity on and off. Thank God, church. day is, amen, he would say, one year older, one year nearer your grave. Joyful person, my dad. But it's true. It is true. And as I've gotten older, if Jesus tarries, I know that I'm nearer my grave than I was yesterday. Right? Right? Don't get me wrong, I don't want to go yet. But my point is, church, God is saying, goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. All the days. Now, I can look back on my life, the churches that I've had the privilege to pastor, the churches that I've preached in around the world, And I can say, thank God for God. Because I've seen His goodness. I've seen His mercy all around the world. Why? Because the Bible says the earth is full of His goodness. But how often we forget that. How often because of our selfish attitudes we forget to. How good he really is. Because none of us deserve heaven. Sorry to burst your bubble. Not one of us here this morning deserve heaven. If it wasn't for Jesus, we wouldn't even make it to heaven. 
This is why I look back. And I say to you this morning, if you are a child of God, in other words, if you are born again, if you've repented of your sin, if you're a child of God and the Lord is your shepherd, you don't have to face the future without a question mark. I know I'm going to heaven. Hello. I know I'm going to heaven whilst I stay saved. Whilst I'm right with God. And that should be the check for all of us to check our hearts so we make it to the right place at the final destination. Because goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. See, church, if you're a Christian this morning, I mean a real Christian. If that offends some of you, then you need to repent and get saved. Because there's a lot of people that say they're Christians that are not. A lot of people. But I can tell you now, church, if you are a Christian, then there's hope. There's a promise for you that you don't have to face the future with a question mark. You face it with an exclamation mark. Why? Because God's goodness and God's mercy will follow you. You may not see it. You may not even feel it. You may be at times pressed to find it. But I want to tell you, it's always there. It's always there. God's goodness and mercy, even when you have a bad day, it's always there. There's a saying in Leicester, people get mardy. Right? Well, let me tell you, even when you get mardy, Goodness and mercy will follow you. It's real. Because God's goodness and God's mercy follows us all the days of our life. So let's look lastly at God's glory is waiting for me. Who's excited about heaven? Amen? Who thinks about heaven? Come on, church. As a Christian, you need to be thinking about heaven. You know, nowadays, amen, we're told when we're young to take out life insurance. Who's got life insurance here? Put your hands up. Well, a lot of you haven't. Life insurance is there for a reason. Amen. So that if For example, if you're a spouse, if you're a husband and you die, your wife can be taken care of financially. Unless you're very wealthy and got rich investments, that's fine. You don't need life insurance, perhaps. But I've seen people die and they've left nothing. Left nothing but a load of debts behind. And that poor wife that's left behind... She then has to struggle. This is why life insurance is good. As a pastor, I have life insurance. Because if anything happens to me, I want Linda to be taken care of financially. I want her not to worry about the bills, the rent. So that's wise, right? And it's like, You know, here is uh, the life insurance business. uh, They know you're going to die. And so they're trying to help you prepare for the future. Well, as a Christian, you need to be preparing for the future. You need to be preparing for the future, church, because every one of us uh, is going to face a final destination. Every one of us... uh, Amen, is going to make it to heaven or hell. There's a great word in the 
Psalms is that little connective word that says and. That word and, that little word connects our todays with our tomorrows. It binds our present with our future. The entire thought meant so much to David because David said in Psalms 27 and verse 4, he says, the one thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and, and, there's that word, and, to inquire in his temple. See, David had one goal in his life. What's the one goal in your life? Get a better job, pastor. <laughs> Make loads of money. Your one goal in life should be make it to heaven. Your one goal in life should be, I want to make it to heaven. Yes, God wants to bless us on the way with good jobs and, you know, blessings of God. Yes, but our major goal should be like David. David is telling us, even as a shepherd boy, his one major goal is to make it to heaven. Because David, believe it or not, was pumped because after the and, in that portion of scripture that we just read, he doesn't just say, I will die, or I'll cease to exist, or I'll dissolve into nothingness. He says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Dwell in the house of the Lord forever, church. Now that really speaks to shepherds because shepherds uh, were always on the move. If you know anything about the shepherds, uh, amen, in some countries they live in tents. They live in tents uh, as the sheep have cleaned up one area, they move on to the next. Uh, as they devoured all the grass, they move on. The shepherd never got to settle down in one place very long. But David says, one day, I'm going to make my final move. I'm going to reach my final destination. I'm going to be in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. I mean, that excites me, church. That excites me that one day, heaven is going to be our home. And some of you are like, oh, I've got years. I'm not old like you, pastor. Listen, it's coming. It's coming. Your final destination is coming. If Jesus tarries, you know, the Bible says 70 years. Anything over 70 is a bonus. Right? Anything over 70 is a bonus. And we thank God for our older saints. But the truth of it is, your final destination is coming. And so church, uh, the destination, I want you to understand something. It's not just a place. It's a person. You notice that Psalms begins with uh, the Lord uh, and it ends with the Lord. Jesus said in John 14 and verse 2, In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Some of you may live in a little two-bedroom house now. But look what the Bible says. Mansions. Mansions. Now, I don't know about you, but two and a half thousand or 2,500 years is a long time to be building my mansion. Right? A long time. But he, he says, I go to prepare a place for us, church. 
Now the word mansion there literally means dwelling places. If we are his sheep and Jesus is our shepherd, then you are guaranteed and reserved, amen, a place, a mansion. And praise God, by the way, that there's no checkout time. You know, like when you go to one of the hotels, you have to check out by such and such a time. When you get there, when you make it to the final destination called heaven, there's no checkout time. You're there, church. Now, I don't know all the facts about the future. I don't even know how I'm going to die or how you're going to die if Jesus tarries, but I know this. You're going to die. If Jesus tarries, you're going to die. But church, though I do not know the facts about the future, I do know that the finality of the future, and that is, as Christians, we're going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hello. We're going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I remember... When I was pastoring in Glasgow, this guy came and visited me one day. And he says, you Christians, you got your head in the clouds. I said, why? He said, forever? In heaven? All eternity? In heaven? I mean, it's not talking about just a thousand years or ten thousand years or a million years. It's talking about eternity. Yes, great, Anna. Don't you think you'll get bored? Don't you think you'll get bored? I said, you don't understand heaven. You don't understand heaven. And let's be honest, we don't really understand heaven. Come on. We don't really understand. All I know is that pavements are going to be paved with gold. And there'll be no reason to get a pickaxe and dig up the gold. Right? Pavements will be paved with gold, which shows me, amen, how riches don't mean nothing there. You see, church, it blesses me as I study this psalm because I believe God saved the best to last. Because he tells us in the very beginning of this psalm that we will lack nothing. When we're hungry, he'll lead us to green pastures. When we're thirsty, he'll lead us to still waters. When we're down, he will pick us up and he'll always lead us in the right way. Even when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Jesus will protect us with his rod and his staff. Even when we are surrounded by our enemies, we will eat in a calmness and assurance at his table, knowing he's right beside us. He tells us, church, us, our earthly life is going to be full of goodness and mercy. You know, as a Christian... I've never laughed so much in my life. I've never enjoyed life so much because now it has meaning to me. I remember as a teenager crying my eyes out, thinking what's the point of life? To die. I couldn't see any purpose in it as a young teenager. I remember a time when I got to a place in my life where I wanted to take my own life. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God, amen, that now I understand that goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. All the days, church. He tells us that our earthly lives are going to be full of goodness and mercy. And it's wonderful for us to know him to love Him, to worship Him, to serve Him, to praise Him whilst we're here on earth. But David closes 
this psalm by telling us that if the Lord is your shepherd, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. I want to tell you, church, none of you have seen anything yet. None of you haven't seen anything yet until you reach your final destination. When you get through them gates, you're going to go, wow. I mean, it's going to be a while that's going to last. Some of us, yes, I know, we'll just be thankful to get through the gates. But when we get to our final destination, when we make heaven our home, because I'm telling you, it's real. And it's going to happen. It's not some fairy tale. Jesus tells us all about it. There was a woman who had been diagnosed with terminal illness. She had been given three months to live. So she decided she would get things in order. She contacted her pastor. She had him come round to the house to discuss the funeral arrangements and what she wanted to be done. She requested that she be buried with her favorite Bible. It seemed as though they had talked about everything and the pastor was getting ready to leave when the woman suddenly remembered something very important to her. She said, Pastor, there's just one more thing. He said, what's that? She said, well, this is very important. I want to be buried with a fork in my right hand. A fork. You know, knife and fork. She wanted uh, to be buried with a fork in her right hand. The pastor looked at her for a moment like she'd lost her mind. He didn't know quite what to say. The woman said, I know you think it's strange, pastor, but in all my years of attending church, when they have food fellowships afterwards, I always remember that when the dishes of the main course was being cleared, someone would always lean over and say, keep your fork Keep your fork so you don't miss out uh, on what's coming next. She says, that's my favorite part because I knew something better was always coming. Either chocolate cake or banana pudding or apple pie, something wonderful and something sweet. She said, when people walk past my casket, uh, when I'm dead and gone, uh, she said, I want them to see the fork in my hand. And she said, Pastor, I want you to get a good look on their faces too. Because they're going to ask. And so Pastor says, Amen. On the day of her funeral, they have an open casket. People are piling in and the pastor's standing there smiling. And everyone is asking, what's the thing with the fork? What's the thing with the fork? And the pastor just turns round. He says, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. That's what our sister believes. And that's the truth, church. Because the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come for all of us. And one day we'll get to meet our final destination. And the truth of it is this morning, this lady took her salvation seriously. This lady church, she understood the best is yet to come. And I want to tell you this morning as I close, that we're all going to have a final destination. Every one of us are going to end up somewhere. And you choose today by the decisions that you're making whether you're going to end up in heaven or you're going to end up in hell. But be sure, goodness and mercy will continue to follow you all the days of your life. And even though you can't see it at times, you can't feel it at times, but be sure it's always there. 
God is just a prayer away. And so the next time you reach down this afternoon for your fork, know that Jesus is there, that he's your shepherd. And just remember, your final destination is coming. And I want to tell every one of you here today, the best is yet to come. Can you say amen? With that, I'd like every head bowed, every eye closed in this place. Uh, every head bowed, every eye closed. The final destination. Psalms 23 and verse 6 tells us again, goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. David had a confidence he had a boldness. Why? Because he was confident in his relationship with Jesus. What about you today? Are you confident that when the final chapter of your life closes, are you confident that heaven will be your home? Because if you're not confident today, then maybe you need to pray that prayer of repentance. You need to pray that prayer and invite Jesus into your life. Maybe you're here this morning and you know, you know in your heart that there are things wrong in your walk with God and you're worried about your final destination. Well, today, get it right. Today, repent of your sins. Today, Say to God, I'm sorry. I want the goodness and the mercy that will follow me all the days of my life. You're online today. What's your final destination? Because it's either going to be heaven or it's going to be hell. There's nothing else. There's heaven or there's hell. And you choose you choose. And if you want to make heaven your home, then pray the prayer on your screen. Make sure you're right with Jesus. Many of you here this morning, I ask you again, what's your final destination? If you can't be honest with yourself now, then you never will. Be honest with yourself. If you don't have the assurance that heaven is going to be your home, that's going to be your final destination, then maybe you need to pray the prayer again. Maybe you need to repent again to get right with Jesus. And if that's you today, you want to make sure you're right with God, you need to repent and lift up your hand and put it down. And we'll gladly pray with you today. Anyone at all? You want to repent of your sin? You want to make sure you're right with Jesus? Lift up your hand. Yes, I see that hand. You can put that hand down. Who else? Who else would there be? Say, yes, that's me. I want to get right with God today. Don't allow pride to rob you now. Because there are some of you here sitting. You're more concerned about what other people will think if you lift your hand. Forget about other people. It's between you, me, and God. Because one day you're going to stand at those pearly gates and you're going to hear those words. You're going to hear those words, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Or you're going to hear those words, Depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. Yes, but I went to church. Yes, but your heart was far away from God. This is your opportunity to get right. Who else would there be? Lift up your hand. Backslidden away from God. That brother, lift your hand. Would you come? Amen. And I'm going to get, uh, amen, a brother to come and pray for you. Brother Michael, if you would come and pray. Uh, amen. Church, I want to open up these altars this morning for you to come and pray. Come out of your seat and pray about 
your final destination. Come and thank God for His goodness and His mercy. Thank God that you're alive today. Because no one is guaranteed tomorrow. These altars are open, church. Let's come. Let's come. Maybe you just need to come and thank God for your salvation. Maybe you just need to come and thank God that He gave Jesus for us. Father, I pray, touch your church right now. That we would understand that one day heaven is going to be our home. And God, help us to make the right choices. God, help us to prepare rightly for our final destination. Because God, we know that your heart's desire is none shall perish. You want us all to make heaven our home. But Lord, by the choices that we make daily, the choices, the things that we hold on to, the anger, the bitterness, the hurts, the resentful. God, all these things, Lord, that we hold on to that affects our walk with you, God. Lord, we give them to you to this day. We don't want anything to come in between us making heaven our home and our final destination. God, we repent today because we understand that your goodness is watching over us. God, help us this day. That Lord, through the journey of life, that we would prepare correctly for the final destination. That we would be excited about making heaven our home. God, help us today. Help us, Lord, to have the conviction to do what's right by God for the sake of Jesus. Oh, Lord, stir us for heaven. Let it be forever edged in our minds, on our lips, uh, as we see the world falling away, as we see the world coming apart. Let us, as Christians, have a confidence like David. That one day we're going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. And God, I pray, let that be the words on our lips. Let that be the conviction that's a part of us every single day. That our final destination is getting closer. And one day, heaven or hell is going to be our final destination. God, I pray. I pray today that this church, these wonderful people, prepare correctly to make heaven their homes. Those that need to repent, repent of known sins unforgiveness God I pray God forgive us prepare us Lord for your goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives in Jesus name Continue singing that I love you. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I 
wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing all the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I have been oh, I will sing all the goodness. I love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and in darkest nights You are close like no I've known you as I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God so my life you have been faithful, so faithful God. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see all the goodness. Your goodness is running after. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. When my life's laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, is running after oh, me. All my life. You have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am in, oh, I will sing all the goodness of God. Let's give him praise, Jack. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we praise you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, God, that follows us, that pursues us all the days of our life, God. We thank you, oh, gracious. God, Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that this psalm is on your lips. Amen. That his goodness and mercy follows you, pursues you, comes after you all the days of your life. Even when you've done wrong. Even when you've done wrong. And we all do wrong. God's goodness is always there. And all you got to do is repent, acknowledge your sin. And I'm telling you, your final destination will be the right place. So let's, uh, amen, close in a word of prayer. Remember, it's Deborah's birthday. We're celebrating. She's cooked food for the whole church. Amen. So don't rush off. Amen. There'll be food served in the prayer room there. There's lots and lots of food. Believe you me. Amen. She's cooked for an army. Amen. Uh, and so uh, please don't rush off uh, and uh, it'll all be served there for you. But be blessed. Remember youth this afternoon. Remember church tonight. Amen. I'm going to be preaching on popular verses. I've picked out one verse. Uh, amen. For tonight. So please come out. Uh, hear the word of God tonight. Uh, and let's all make sure we make it to the right destination heaven. Can you say amen? amen? Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. And brother Brian, if you'd close us in a word of prayer, please.
Yes. Yes. Lord, I pray, oh God, this morning, oh God, as we celebrate our feast of blessing, oh God, I pray for many more leaders, oh God, around the world that you have blessed with this pandemic, oh God, that you keep them healthy. Amen. Be blessed, love one another, and fellowship. Amen.